everyone. So for today's video, I wanted to go over a question that I'm asked quite a bit when it comes to container gardening. And that is, how do you know what container size to use for XYZ plant? Or how much can you fit in this size container? And even though it's a question I get a lot, it's a hard one to answer because a lot of the times the answer is, it depends based on a lot of different factors. Um, but I figured what I would do today is kind of give you my general guidelines of what I found has worked really well in terms of container size over the last four years that I've been container gardening, an idea of how much I can fit in different size containers, and also just some of the things that I started doing at the beginning to help kind of guide me along the way. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and I will get started telling you how I figured out what can fit in what size container. Now, the first thing I wanna say is that I firmly believe you can grow anything you want in a container garden, as long as you have a container large enough. Um, so I have grow bags that are 30 gallons, my raised beds are obviously fairly large, but I've been to places in Chicago that have trees growing inside of them in giant containers. So as long as you have a container large enough, I believe you can fit any plant in your container garden. Now, having said that, a lot of times if you're container gardening, that's because you don't have a ton of space. Um, but again, I really do think there isn't any limitation of the types of plants that you can grow. So if you really love a plant, you really want it in your garden, I think you can make it possible. Now, as far as figuring out container size at the beginning of my garden journey, I mean, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. Um, I've told this story before, but I think in 2017, when I just had like a very, very small, I wouldn't even consider it a garden, but I got a tomato plant, probably from Home Depot, popped it in a container smaller than this. Um, I think it was about eight inches in diameter. It was an indeterminate tomato, which I didn't know what it meant. And not surprisingly, it didn't do very well. It kept tipping over, it barely produced any fruit. And eventually when it did produce fruit, the whole thing fell over and broke in like a very slight breeze. So container size does matter when it comes to what you're growing in your garden. So the first thing I started doing after that was I would just turn to Google, which is where I answered the majority of my questions starting out and where I answer the majority of my questions now that I have about gardening. So I would literally just type into Google the type of plant. Um, if you know like a specific variety, because maybe certain varieties grow larger than others, uh, for example, like different hydrangeas grow to different sizes, so might like different container sizes, add that as well, and then put in best container size or best pot size or how to grow hydrangeas in pots, for example. And what you should get is results with recommended container sizes. Now, there will be results that vary, but I would say typically most of the time the recommendations are pretty close to each other. So you can kind of take either the average of what's recommended or the largest one of what's recommended, assuming it fits into your garden. Um, but what I saw is that sizes will most commonly be listed in gallons, which I wasn't really expecting because beforehand I would always measure my pots by diameter, but obviously a pot can be a certain diameter, but taller or shorter, and that would change the actual gallon size of the pot itself. So I find that a lot of results are in gallons. Um, I have done some, like, I've searched for, like, for example, what is a typical diameter of a 10 gallon pot? And if I have a pot that has that diameter, I'm not sure the gallon size of it, I'll assume that it's pretty good. But now that I've been using container sizes um, that I know are certain gallons, I can kind of eyeball a certain container and know that, yes, this is five gallons, seven gallons, 10 gallons, etc. Um, so that's probably what you will find. And then what I would do is I would go online and search for 10 gallon grow bag, seven gallon grow bag, five gallon grow bag, and order them. So that was kind of my pattern at first. So I would get the plant, I would then look up how to grow it, uh, and then I would either get the pot at the same time in the garden center, so I would just literally Google it and then go grab the pot, um, or I would order it online later. So all of my grow bags I get from Amazon, uh, Vivo Sun is the brand of the beige ones. I think Garden Forever is the brand of the large ones. And that's how I get the containers for my garden. So definitely if it's something that you're starting off with new, um, you've never grown before, just search online, plant best container size or recommended container size, and you should get a lot of helpful results there. Now, from my personal experience, I'll kind of tell you what I found works really well in terms of the pot sizes I use the most, certain plants that I know I can grow in either smaller or larger pots, other things like that that I've kind of just picked up along the way. So the container size I found I use the most often in my garden 
are definitely either five or seven gallon grow bags, pots, whatever it might be. But those are the two most popular sizes that the majority of plants I grow tend to be happy in. And for the most part, usually what I'm doing is I'm growing one type of crop in one of the five or seven gallon pot sizes. Again, this isn't a universal rule. Uh, I grew two okra plants in a seven gallon pot and they did just fine. But things like one melon plant did really well in a seven gallon pot. Um, one eggplant, one zucchini plant, one cucumber plant. So any plants like that, that I know don't need a ton of space, um, do really well in five or seven gallon pots. Now that's more for the crops and the vegetables. For things like flowers, unless it's a giant sunflower, those I can fit multiple in a five or seven gallon container. But overall, that seems to be my most used pot size. And I would say I tend to gravitate, well, so the five fits a little bit better, obviously, because the diameter is a little bit smaller. I find seven gallon gives me just a little bit more wiggle room. I know my dahlias do really well in seven gallon. I think five might be a little too small for them. But yeah, I'd say about a 50-50 split between those two being my most used sizes in the garden. Now, plants that I know definitely need more room than seven gallon. So tomatoes, specifically indeterminate tomatoes. So indeterminate means they'll continue growing. Determinate means they're gonna to get to a set height which is smaller than indeterminate. So with indeterminate tomatoes, I think if I put one in a seven gallon grow bag, I know it would be very root bound. Um, I think that it would also tip over even in seven gallon. And most of the recommendations I read online was somewhere between either 10 to 15 gallons. So I have two tomato plants right now growing in one 30 gallon grow bag. And that works out pretty well because 30 divided by two is 15. Other plants that I have that I grow in larger size containers, um, my rhubarb, maybe I could get away with seven gallon. I think right now they're growing in about a 15 gallon pot. It's about 20 inches in diameter. Uh, my All my berries, I think I would need to have in larger pots. Obviously my dwarf blueberries are made for smaller pots, but like my regular raspberry and blueberry bushes, I have those in probably like 10, I'd say they're about 10 to 12 gallon pots. Um, again, those I get from garden centers, so those I know more based on the diameter, but they're about 18 to 20 inches in diameter pots that are pretty deep. I don't think I would grow a perennial bush that's supposed to come back year after year in a pot much smaller than that. So I would stay away from five to seven gallon containers for um, those larger bushes, but smaller fruit plants. So my strawberries, obviously I have two that are growing in a container that's probably around seven gallons. I could probably fit a third one in there and just cram it in there together. Um, all of my herbs, those are just in 10 inch diameter pots. So, I mean, I would say that's maybe two and a half gallons, maybe three gallons per pot. So those do really well in smaller containers. Um, and you will find some variance between like things that you know can work in really small pots, things that you know can work in really large pots, just kind of as you go along and get used to it. Um, but like I said, most of the crops I find that I'm growing do really well with one per a five or seven gallon grow bag. Now, when it comes to my larger containers, so for example, my raised beds, I'm um, going back to the 30 gallon grow bags that I have, I do more of that based on recommended spacing than like trying to figure out, for example, the gallon size of a raised bed and how many zinnias can I fit per gallon. I'll just look at the seed packet and it says space them six inches apart and I will do that in the raised beds. However, something I have found in my years of gardening and containers is that I can definitely get away with spacing things closer together than recommended. And in some situations, I find that works really well because it helps keep the soil covered. I find it helps that hold moisture a little bit better, um, suppresses weeds, even though I don't have a ton of weeds, but I do have the maple seeds that are trying to grow maple trees in my raised beds and it helps to suppress that as well. On the flip side, there are gonna be issues with like potentially spreading disease, not enough air circulation, um, but I do find that I can even cut spacing recommendations about in half and things still grow. I don't know if it's 100% as productive as it would be if I followed the spacing recommendations, but I myself don't notice a difference in productivity. I've mentioned this before with my gomfrina that I spaced like two to three inches apart versus my gomfrina that I spaced the six to eight inches recommended apart they seem to be just as productive in each of the containers. So with the larger ones, I do again tend to base it more off of spacing, but knowing that I can cut some of that spacing down. Another example is going back to the two 
tomato plants that I have growing in one 30 gallon grow bag. Um, I find that because the space is large enough, I think the recommended spacing for tomato plants is two feet. These are maybe a foot apart, probably a little bit less. And for that one too, they were perfectly fine. I mean, again, they're healthy. They're producing a lot of tomatoes. I even threw some nasturtiums down below them. So yeah, I think you can get away with reducing the size of the recommended spacing in what you find on the seed packets. And again, I think that is just kind of like the plain it's safe estimate that they want to make sure that you're not spacing it too close together. But I don't think there's really been any situation I've found so far where I space things too closely together and they haven't done well. Maybe I did try to go to grow two giant sunflowers in a smaller container. My morning glories right now, they could probably do for a larger container, but they're again, still growing just fine. It's just that best practice wise, larger containers would probably work. But I would say if you do have limited space, try shoving a bit more in there than is recommended and seeing how it does for you. Now, things that I have growing right now where I have multiples in one container, I mean, my radishes, I think those need to be spaced an inch apart. So you can get those, throw them in any container um, that you want and you can grow a good amount per container, um, just as long as they have about an inch space to really fully develop. I have beets, multiple beets in a container. Um, carrots, again, just as long as they have enough room to develop down vertically. Those do really well. Um, obviously all of my zinnias right here. So this is a five gallon grow bag and I have two zinnias in it spaced about four inches apart. And again, I think the recommendation for zinnias was probably six to eight, I would say. So these have done really well for me. Um, again, they're just as productive as the ones that I have in my largest raised bed on the front deck. I also find that just in general, cool weather crops or cool weather flowers, for example, too, don't need as much space as the things that you're growing during the kind of main part of the growing season. Because for example, with like um, pansies versus petunias, my pansies aren't really around to grow as large as my petunias will get. So they don't need as much space. So things that I'm planting, especially more decorative things, that I know are only gonna be around for maybe a month to a month and a half, I shove them all in there together um, because for me, I just want the container to look really pretty for the time that it's there and not wait for things to fill in. Whereas with my raised bed, with my zinnias and my petunias, I plant those, space them, you know, still a little bit shorter than recommended, but I do give them space because I know they're going to grow during the, what do I have them growing for four months, five months, probably like four and a half months that they're going to grow and explode in size. So cool weather plants, I don't really plan for as much space as my warm weather plants. So I think those are all my tips as far as kind of figuring out how many plants you can fit in a certain size container. So definitely start with the internet, um, just search for the plant and recommended container sizes. Again, you'll probably get differing results, but just try to find the one that's most often recommended or take an average of what is recommended. And then if you are investing in something like I want to get some grow bags or pots, I would say that five to seven gallon is what seemed to work pretty well for the most part for me. Again, some plants need a little bit larger. There's a lot of plants that you can get away with smaller, but again, those are the most commonly used containers that I have in my garden. So I hope this video is helpful. I know it's sometimes hard to answer questions that don't have one specific answer to them, um, but just giving you an idea of kind of what I found works really well for me in my garden. If you have any questions or you have any recommendations for different pot sizes that you've used for different plants that works really well, let me know in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.